Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, MMAForSelfDefense.com. I'm going to show you a little something I call the Silat Salute, which is um, some Kawashi Waza and Karate. Okay, I'm using the opponents off-balancing against him. This is a better technique against untrained people on the street. Some of the um, variations I show is a little theoretical, it's more for combatants, if you happen to end up in those positions. Okay, but um, the first one you might be able to pull off against some decent people. And what it is, is a reaction against someone that oversteps on their step jab or a power jab. Not someone that stands and does this, but someone that steps in, steps in. Someone that comes with all their combinations off the jab. Or someone that double jabs, stepping in really hard, lunging in. Okay, so um, this is a technique you do for self pull against traditional. Okay, closer. Southpaw against traditional. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step off of this angle that I do a lot of techniques off. Step off of this angle with intention. If he comes with the jab, keep on my feet. If he comes with the jab, come. I step off of this angle. Okay? Now, come to my hands. What I do is, is a parry, just like any boxer would do and has done. And if a parry works, I can bring the other hand too. And I call this see lot salute because you see a lot of guys do this. Um, this is going to the dark side or the back side. Some of the stuff Steven Seagal was teaching um, Machida and Anderson Silva. Whether you think it's a joke or not, some of his theories are good about getting to the blind side of your opponent. And you can do that when you're in opposite stances and if you have appropriate footwork on the outside gate. Of course, it's better always to fight someone back here. So I want to get back there if I can, especially if I'm on the street. I can use him as body armor. Um, you know, I can make a hole past one guy and, and, and run, take off. So here's the technique. If he comes with a jab, I get behind it. Okay, it's one, two. One, two, off of that angle with forward intention. Now that looks pretty real, right? You're going to say that this is too fancy, but boxes parry all the time. So if I parry, I can guide I can, I can, if I can parry this, which you can, I can also do this. That's free if I practice this. And at least add some friction. And by adding some friction, it helps keep his momentum a little bit coming forward. Hence, trapping this arm for milliseconds. If he has a gi on or he has a heavy coat on, it's even better. Okay, so come again nice and slow. One, two. Again, nice and slow. One, two, and theoretically, if I can turn this into a, like, lapso and we turn a pulling hand, great, now I hold the arm, I can break it, whatever. Again, a little theoretical, but we may end up in a struggle here in combative and self-defense situations. So, again. Okay, when I get behind this guy, you see both times now I've done knee bumps. Because I've gotten behind him, I've, I've done with the knee. If I end up here, I'm going to kick with my shin, whatever I feel. If I'm here, I lift with the knee. If I end up here, out here without good contact, I might sweep as in judo, as an ashi Okay, here, sweep. Okay, so like the Ashi Barai in Judo. Or a knee lift like in Muay Thai. Or like a kick in Muay Thai or Kyoko Shin or Enshin Karate. Okay, so a lot of these off-balancing techniques you'll find in arts like Enshin Karate, Shotokan Karate, Aikido, Judo, uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Old School Jiu Jitsu. Um, so however I take them down depends on how deep I end up and just what I feel instinctually. Could be a knee lift, could be a kick, could be Ashi Barai foot sweep. Okay, show it a couple times again. Steven Seagal type action. You can't show it to make it look awesome live because you can't hurt your opponent, your training person. Okay? But on the street, I don't care about the guy. I'm going to close on and take his head off.
Okay, that was slow. Nice and slow. Three, two, one. Five, hit him with my step through. Punch him with my bicep under the chin or in the nose, anywhere. Punch up and down. You'll see a lot of this, like in my systemic video for single leg defense video. Anytime I get this guy's head going back, his mind collapses. I get him tilted back and then I drop weight on his chest. So if I can do this, he goes down. That's what I'm doing with my arm. Again, first one, maybe you can pull off an MMA guy, challenge it in yourself and sparring. This one's more for streak because I gotta slow down. I can't kill him too bad. You know, I might hit him with the chin. I'm going to pop him with my bicep in the nose. I go up and close down. Okay, so let's go slow. Up and down. Really punching at me. Huh? I was really punching at me. Okay. So, you see, it can, it can work. I'm getting this guy down. Um, next, if I can get behind the guy, not talking to train MMA fighter guy, for combative self-defense, maybe I can take his back for the RNC, for a naked choke. I choke him out, use him as body armor, a flea kick to the back of the leg if I want to take him down. Bit theoretical, you'd be surprised because untrained guys, they give them momentum. They come forward swinging. Okay, they come with real intention to kill you. I might get behind this guy. Okay, so we're talking to batters there, moving fast. Next, I'll go ahead and put the PM. So the first one, guys, really you can pull off. The other one's a little theoretical, but try it. You'd be surprised with getting to the backside, the dark side of an opponent, what angles open up. Now if he has a gi on, or a heavy coat, let's assume he's not the same weight as me, which Christian's only a few pounds lighter, 10 pounds lighter, 8 pounds lighter, something like that. If you got a good size advantage and a skill advantage over your opponents, just to know, this is going to add more friction. If I do cheer, of course it's going to help this takedown, yanking, yanking with the knee, Ashi Barai, kick, whatever. But this, this, this friction of his sleeve helped get me to a grabbing hand or a lopsided pick four. Then you can rotate the arm up, palm up, breaking here with your knee. Okay. Then from there you go to a forward throw. Okay. Okay. So, again, kind of theoretical. Maybe he's got a knife. Now, ideally, in knife defense, I'd be on a Russian two on one. But let's say you end up here. You should know what to do in this type of situation. Back sweep the guy. Or maybe boom, this quickly. Hit there, right? Boom. And extend that elbow. Then forward throw. He either lands on his face. The lighter guys will rotate all around with their back with their hand traps. So you can pound him. Here. And then like a weight on my leg, kick this back, the judo throw, here, see, I rotate it around better, and I have the hand trap, here, for a nice knee on belly, pound it, okay, so, there's a lot of possibilities with this, thank you Christian, I'm Dan the Wolfman, go to MMAforSelfDefense.com.